Welcome to another cold painting table tutorial, and today we're going to be looking at Taddeus the Purifier from Blackstone Fortress. So we have Taddeus all prime black, and we're going to basically um, prime the entire model here We're using uh, Skill 75's Sahara Yellow. Um, it goes on real, real thin here, guys, so it's going to be a couple coats to go ahead and get her done. So I'm not working through the normal like browns to beiges for um, Taddeus's priestly robes here. I'm going into like yellows and, and, and real pale yellows, almost cream-like colors, but still definitely not a beige. Um, so Tenere yellow here is our first highlight, looking at a zenithal highlight, leaving all that Sahara yellow uh, down in the bottom. To start shading the robes, we're going to use um, Vallejo Model Colors Flat Earth. Uh, you can see like switched airbrushes going to the um, the finer detail brush. Uh, just trying to hit the the underfolds of well, both his fat because he is a, a portly fellow, um, as well as um, like anywhere that the knees would be like like where you sort of just are there um, like underneath his knees, uh, where the other parts of the robes will will come in and come into effect with it. Um, we're gonna hit another highlight after this anyway, so if it gets some places I don't want it to be, that's not a big deal. We are gonna brighten up uh, his robes one more time past the generic yellow that we used last step. And Operation Color Reclamation comes back, we're using Tenere Yellow again, um, just looking at more zenithly now, even um, thinned down a fair bit more than I was using it before as well. Uh, to get a nice good gradient going across, um, the nice thing is with the yellows, you're looking at a fairly like translucent color, and that's going to allow um, that flat earth to show back in. You can see like even when I blew it on my, my thumb there, um, it like you can see my skin tone underneath it, which is a, a, a neat little uh, effect that we can run with. Okay, and then at the end here, um, the last color that we have on the robes is going to be Skill 75's White Sands. Um, it's a very cream-like off-white color um, that, again, it's pretty thin down here, so we're going to see all those yellow and brown tones through this shade, um, and it was, or not a shade, but through the color that we're putting on right now. Um, uh, again, you can think of it zenithly, or you could just think about where would the shade, like the the shadows in the model, no longer be? And that's really what the, everything else that we've been doing so far is just uh, creating depth to the miniature. Um, and that's the really cool thing about him. Like when I was approaching this guy, I didn't, I wasn't as excited as I was. <laughs> My buddy Steve was just um, uh, playing him in the Blackstone Fortress campaign that we're doing, so I wanted to get him done for him. Um, so uh, it was me trying to keep my interest by like doing a lot of experimentations and colors which is why i went with the yellow here um and then up to white sand so uh, his pontiff hat and then um, different parts of him coming along um just again take your time um even if you were not using an airbrush and just going in with a, a standard brush uh, just to make sure that you're getting uh, that last color where you want everything to be
so I like to black out pieces of the miniature when I'm done airbrushing, which is what you saw me here do. Um, and I'm just hitting all of his skin with Scale 75's Indian Shadow. Now that the base coat's on, um, we're going to go ahead and um, basically like highlight his flesh up uh, using Skill 75's basic flesh. Um, it's not the same like pinky hues that we were using when we were using pink flesh. Um, it's I don't know, you can see into the airbrush. Um, it's I don't know less le less vibrant. I, I would I would call it. Um, And it's my normal wash of Reckon Flesh Aid afterwards. I'm gonna let that all dry, and you guys will get a quick um, peek at what his skin look, looks like when it's all uh, said and done. And now we can go over the long process of goldifying him. Um, we're using uh, Scale 75's Negro Gold uh, as our base here. Um, it's, a, it's a neat color. It's not as vibrant as the Viking Gold that I oh, was using previously in, in other tutorials. Um, but, I don't know, it reminds me of old gold you'd find in a church. That's the easiest way I can think of it. I think about like the church that my parents took me to when I was a kid. And like, this is what the crosses were made of. But I think that will suit pretty well for a Minister and Priest. Okay, so we're going to start getting more of a shine and, and, and more oomph on the model here uh, in all the gold areas. We just mixed together some Nicker Gold and Paradox Alchemy, both from Skill 75, um, to start highlighting this bad boy. Um, I'm being pretty liberal with where I want the highlights to be. Um, you notice that there's a lot of filigree and, uh, and texture on that cowl? I don't know. I don't know what you'd call the pauldrons that he's wearing across his chest as well, but basically what we're doing here is hitting his mace and... Uh, and anywhere else that we need uh, to have some good solid highlights. And this is really creating the base color for the gold areas. Um, the nicker gold was the sh was like the shadows. This is going to be the base. We're going to go again right after this with just plain paradox alchemy, um, and then uh, shade it all up. Okay, so like I said, um, here's us going in uh, just more specifically with, with Paradox Alchemy. Um, again, when we're painting metallics with trimmed met uh, metallic metals, um, a lot of the, I don't know, brightness will be picked up just inherently upon where you're putting the paint. Um, but if we start treating it like painting non-metallic metals, um, the paint just starts to pop a little bit more and more. So one thing that I would like challenge you guys, uh, or, or anyone that's watching my tutorials, is don't rely on the general 
characteristics of the paint to do your work. Um, paint it as if you were painting like just browns and yellows um, and beiges to make your metallics. Uh, I think in the end you're going to get a lot better of a result and people are going to like what you look or like what you're doing a lot more. Um, there is some weirdness happening with my camera here, kind of like what happened a little while ago when we were doing the, uh, the Urkel video. Um, it wants to change color tones depending on how much of my hands in there, but it'll flip back. Uh, but just rest assured, it's just Paradise Alchemy, straight up here, adding on all the, the, the first layer of highlights here. Now we're even going to go one step further and grab White Alchemy. Now this is a very metallic white paint, and that's different than silver. Silver is is, is clearly, um, I don't know, I, I guess I can't say clearly. You, you look at it more like a metallic gray paint. Uh, in this case, it is incredibly bright. You're not putting it a lot across the model. We're looking at edge highlighting, which isn't something I normally do in models, but for the, for the metallics on this guy, I figure we need to make things pop. We'll hit different um, parts of his pontiff hat. Um, a lot of the filigree is going along um, the, the edges that he's working with, or that we're working with. Tying together the golds here, um, we can use a wash. Uh, in this case, I'm using Agrax Earth Shade Gloss. Um, there's a lot of different um, washes that you could use. I like using Seraphim Sepia a lot for golds. Um, in this case, I'm also using it to, to shade, as you can see in the back of his hat here, um, just the areas around um, the gold. So you can clean it up just by like wiping it off your brush and then moving it around a bit more. Um, that's the nice thing about the glosses, they do act a little bit more like uh, like oil um, oil washes or oil paints, so you can work with them a little bit longer, and they do a really good job of uh, flipping across from uh, just sitting on top of the model or on top of the material to flowing into the cracks a fair bit better. So all that work that we put in for highlights is going to be maintained while it goes into the cracks because it's a gloss. Fantastic. Now that the gold's all done, um, you can kind of get a nice uh, shot of it there. We're going to hit everything that needs to be silver in black metal. Just all of it. Um, the gun, the, uh, the barrels, uh, his mace, his robot hand. If it's going to be silver, that's what we're going to do. Um, just as a note, uh, the tubes along his neck I kept as um, black and uh, gray ribbing. So when I just blacked everything out in the model, I just hit that quick. It was just a black and white mix um, to hit the gray tones that I was looking for.
Uh, this part's not too extravagant, but I just mixed together some black and white that I had on um, the page, or on the white palette that I had, uh, to paint the pages of the holy book that he's holding up. Alright, uh, metal highlight number one uh, is going to be with thrash metal. Um, it's not as as bright as, I guess, I'm using the old GW colors, um, mithril silver and bulk on metal. There's like a step in between those two. It also adds on a weird little side tone. It looks dingy, is, is the easiest way I could say it. But allows you to highlight it up a, a couple more steps um, while still looking excellent. Then we're going to work through the ranges of Scale 75's um, silver um, paint kit. Uh, we're going to highlight the next one with heavy metal, um, being very more selective, or uh, very more, much more selective uh, of where we're highlighting. So uh, the Aquila on his belt, uh, the tops of the skulls, not the whole skulls uh, on the side of his pauldron, um, a couple of the gratings. Like, think about where the light's going to be hitting. Here we like, see me physically moving the model to hit the top of his hand, but not the undersides of it. Uh, just be aware that this is what's going to create a lot of depth for you um, and work real hard. And in the same way that we used a gloss wash um, on all the golds, we're going to hit uh, all the silvers here with non-oil gloss. Um, I guess you could use Agrax again if you wanted to make uh, the metallics here have like a, I guess like a brown tone to it. Um, don't be afraid to like play around with different styles of washes. I really like using um, like highlighting through silvers and then using like sepia or flesh shade and then uh, purple um, to create really cool gold. So you can play a lot around with this guys and you'd probably have a fun time doing it.
next up we have scale 75 white we're highlighting um, two main things right now uh, number one will be the book in his hand uh, and all the pages held within uh, and then the servo skull with the gun as well Okay guys, uh, time to start doing the reds here. Uh, this is scale 75 deep red. Um, reds are reds, do two coats, just thin it out. It's better than having blotchy colors and, and being miserable about the work that you just did because you tried to cut corners like I did last video with ur 75s um, hazard lines. Don't do a coating and, and cut corners. Do it right the first time. Um, so anything that was red in the, uh, uh, in the art uh, from the book or from the studio scheme is what we're hitting here. Cool. Uh, first highlight, um, uh, establishing the main base color here is going to be Scale 75's uh, Blood Red. Um, it is what it is. It's a nice vibrant color. Um, we're going to leave as much of that deep red in the middle of it as we can um, and allow that shade to sit in. Now the cool thing here is that there is actually some sculpted details inside that uh, those lines there. So you can see me just trying to, to mimic whatever symbols are in there. A um, couple hair shots, but that's what we got to deal with. And now our goal is to expand out those symbols that are on him. Um, we're going to use skill Fuchsia, fuchsia, um, not tracing over the entire letter or whatever the heck it was supposed to be, um, but just helping pop out some more color. Um, what it's going to do is just make it more visible from the tabletop, um, and then when we really add in the black edging along the edge of the ribbons, um, They'll just read better and, 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 and look better in the end. Okay, now that those ribbons are done, um, we're going to go and highlight all the other reds that we de uh, we, we base coated with deep red. Now we're going to start off here with uh, Alder Burin Red, um, and you can see that I'm putting the paint on and then just feathering it back out with a clean brush. Um, you can use water quick, you can use two brushes, uh, whatever you want to do, but we're just trying to, to brighten up those tones um, for all the edging, the purity seals, anything else that we base coated is going to be done in this red.
Now, I don't usually just add in white to a color to highlight it, but in this case, I, I wanted to. I wanted to, to see what it would look like. Um, so we just added a little bit of white into that alder brand red, uh, and then started highlighting just the, the top, or top sides of all the, uh, the robes there. Uh, you can see that I, I went back and, and hit the missed uh, edges there. I also had the um, inquis inquisitorial eye on the book um, uh, done in some red now as well. So just be patient, be calm hit your lines, um, hit your edges, do what you need to do to make sure it looks perfect. And as a final highlight, we're going to add in even more white, um, just to hit uh, the exact tops and, and edges here. Um, it's neat, because it's not going to go quite to pink, um, which is which is common when we just start adding in white to, to reds, but um, it, it works in my mind. It doesn't look too bad. Uh, I, I finished off the reds, I, I drew some quick lines along the uh, the book as well to create some text. Uh, we're going to go along the edges here of the, the front tabard piece um, uh, in Scale 75's Dwarf, uh, dwarf Gold. Uh, you can notice that I hit the edges of the, um, I don't know, lettered ribbons that we did before with some uh, Scale 75 Nassar. Um, or whatever kind of off-white that you want. I didn't want it to look the same as all the other colors we were doing. Uh, but here, this is just a different type of gold um, to, to look different from the gold that we hit everywhere before. Um, we're also going to go into the, um, I don't know, inquisitorialized symbol in the middle. Um, anywhere else it needs a little bit of a different type of gold pop. Uh, we're going to hit that. All of the areas that we just did with dwarf gold are now going to get highlighted with elf gold. Uh, now this is the normal steps uh, and, and highlight progressions that I take when I'm doing gold. Um, it was just something basic, I didn't need to, to rewrite the book here just for some of the areas that we're hitting. Um, notice that I also did the rosary, I guess you'd call it, that was hanging off the side too. Okay, we're in the final home stretch, getting the last details on. Um, GW's base color, Mortifying Brown, is an excellent brown. I like that brown. I like uh, Rhinox Hide and Dryad Bark. Um, they all cover fantastically, and that's what we're going to hit all of his satchels in here uh, with that Mortifying Brown. Highlight is going to be using Badger's uh, Minotaur line Cracked Earth. It's a uh, it's a different type of color. Um, a little bit of backflow in the airbrush as well there, uh, but you can see that um, it doesn't look quite as I'd say vibrant as highlighting it through the old snake bite leather would be. So we're going to go a different route. Uh, the next one here is Badger's Bark uh, as the next highlight um, to just hit the edges and just bring up the tones a little bit more. And our last highlight is going to be Vallejo Model Air Sand. Alright, we're going to highlight his shoes here. Um, they were based um, black, and then we're just going to use Scale 75's Anthracite Gray. I think I might add a little bit of uh, white into that as well for one final highlight. Um, the, the, the shots are just a little, in a little bit out of order. Um, we're going to do the greens and such on the Scribble Circle Scroll next, uh, but in this case, I wanted to give you guys a 360 at the end, and that happens to be when I decided to film it, because I realized I forgot to paint his shoes.
All right, and then here we go at the end. Um, uh, we're going to black out um, the last little pieces of the uh, satchel. And I guess I did forget to, to do the, the green, uh, unfortunately. It was just um, uh, GW's Caliban green and then Vallejo Game Colors Escorpina green. Just mix them together. It turns really, really vibrant really quick. Yeah, it looks fantastic. It's a fantastic mix that you can use. Um, so, yeah, just, just blacking things out and then adding in a little bit of white to that black um, to add in some highlights. And then we'll get a quick little turnaround of the model, and then that's what we got. Um, guys, thank you again so much for watching as we're wrapping this one up. I hope you enjoyed this guy. Um, like I said, personally, I thought he was a paint of paint, um, but he's all done now, um, and kicking butt in our Blackstone Fortress campaign. I can't suggest running him enough. Um, he is a super good character in there. Um, but uh, up next is his uh, faithful acolyte, Voile, and I hope you guys can stick around over the next couple days and take a look at him. Uh, and then there's your view from the front. Uh, that is our our finished Taddeus the Purifier. Uh, thanks a lot, guys. Uh, please like, subscribe, and comment, and I'll catch you on the flip side.